So if one is willing to go so far, then we can begin to find out what is the meaning of all this existence. Please, as we said during these talks and before, we are exploring together. We are sharing our explorations together, because there is no authority. Though the speaker sits on a platform because it's convenient, people can see, the platform doesn't give him any authority, and he doesn't accept any authority. So, we are together, and we mean together. Explore and find out for ourselves, together, if there is any meaning to life at all, any depth to life at all, or merely a passing event in a long series of historical process. So, to explore in any field there must be freedom. Freedom to examine, so that in that very examination there is no distortion. If there is, when there is distortion, there is a motive behind that distortion, a motive to find an answer, a motive which you would like to have, or which you think will solve our problems, a motive which may be based on past experience, past knowledge, and all knowledge is the past, and if there is any motive there must be distortion. So can the mind, can our mind, which is our common mind, because we are all, we have the same content in our consciousness. Because all human beings, whether they live in the Far East, Middle East and the Far West, go through this process of fear, agony, torture, anxiety, fear, an endless conflict, inwardly and outwardly. That's the common consciousness of mankind. So when you examine your own consciousness, you are looking into the consciousness of man, and therefore it is not a, a personal, individualistic examination. On the contrary, you are looking into the consciousness of the world, which is you, which is a fact when you go into it very deeply. So a mind that is free, which is a, a tremendous demand, which demands that you, as a human being, are committed totally to the transformation of, that, of the content of consciousness because the content make the consciousness. And we are concerned with the transformation, with the total psychological revolution of this consciousness. 
and to explore it, you need great energy. And that energy comes into being when there is no dissipation of energy. One dissipates through trying to, dis- to overcome what is, to deny what is, to escape from what is. Or to say, I will, or analyze what is. Because the analyzer, as we said during all these many talks of, for many years, the analyzer is the analyzed. There is n- analyzer is not different from that which he analyzes. When you are envious or angry, or greedy, whatever it is, when you analyze the process of greed, the analyzer is himself greed. That which he analyzes is not separate from him. And this is a, this is a fundamental reality. So, we are asking, what is the meaning and the significance of life, if there is any at all? If we say there is, you have already committed yourself to something, therefore you are already, you cannot examine. You have already started with distortion. Or if say there is nothing, no meaning to life, that also is another form of distortion. So one, one must be completely free of both, both the positive and the negative assertions. So, as we said, this is part of meditation. This is the real beginning of meditation. The gurus that come over to this country from India and are springing up all over the world, like so many mushrooms, they have brought to this world great many meanings. There is the transcendental meditation, and I wish they hadn't used that lovely word, which is the repetition of certain words. And they are really, in Sanskrit, there are very, very few mantras which we won't go into now. And the repetition of those words, given at a certain price on the market, give you, if you repeat every morning for twenty minutes in the afternoon, twenty minutes and another twenty minutes in the evening, bring you a certain quality of quietness, constant repetition. You can just as well repeat Ave Maria or Coca-Cola or any other mechanical repetition. It will certainly give you a certain quality of quietness. But this is mechanistic quietness. Because you have reduced the brain to constantly repeat, 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 if you have tried it, even for two minutes, how mechanically it becomes. It becomes quiet. But that's no more transcendental than uh, anything else. And thereby 
we think, will experience something that is beyond the material process of thought. So there is this, that. Man seeks experience. He seeks experience other than the ordinary daily experience. We are bored or tired or fed up with all the experiences we have of life, and we hope to capture some experience which is not the product of thought. And the to experience, the word means to go through, to go through with anything and end it, not remember it and carry it on. But we don't do that. To recognize an experience, you must have already had known it, otherwise it's not new experience. So a mind that demands experience, please listen to this, more other than the mere physical, psychological, everyday experience, some, that demands something far greater and above all this, what it will experience is its own projection, and therefore it is still mechanistic, still materialistic, which is the product of thought. So when you do not demand any experience, when there is no distortion and therefore no illusion, and you have one has understood the whole meaning of desire, which we went into many times during these and other talks, which is sensation plus thought is desire with its image. And so desire is also a distortion when in the process of examination. I hope you are following all this. Then only the mind, the whole structure of consciousness, being free, is capable of looking at itself, looking at itself without any distortion, as you see in a clear mirror your face. The mirror reflects exactly what your face is. There is no distortion unless the mirror is distorted. So in that way the, the mind includes the brain and all the nervous organisms, the whole totality which is the mind, is now free, absolutely without any distorting movement. Distortion takes place when there is effort, right? Effort implies me and something I am going to achieve, division between me and that. That division invariably brings conflict as in the nationalities and so on, wherever there is division there must be conflict. And so meditation comes only when there is the complete ending of conflict. Therefore every other form of meditation where there is effort, practice, Control has no meaning.